So for this first baseball station, one of the things I like to do is throwing and catching. So I grab one of these mitts that has Velcro on the one side, and you can slide your hand right in. So there's not finger holes, your whole hand can go inside. I find that very helpful for students who might not be able to extend their hand all the way, students who have low muscle tone and have a lot of jerking movements like kiddos with muscular dystrophy or CP. This is really nice because it goes right on their hand and they don't have to worry about extending those fingers. And then the ball just has the other side of the Velcro so it'll stick right to the knit. So you can do this in pretty close proximity to the student. You can use bigger balls or smaller balls. Whatever will stick to that mitt I find very helpful and the kiddos are much more successful. If you wanted to modify it a little bit more, you could have a basket. You could have the student hold the basket. You could have the basket in front of the student on the floor. Really kind of tailor it to what your student needs. The next station I like to use is simply running the bases. So I will set up four cones. Each cone has a number on it, one, two, three, and four. And I'll have the students walk and touch, walk and touch. Now normally at the beginning of my classes, students are running the track. So they're very used to having to run in a square around the track or a rectangle. So now we're just changing the shape up a little bit. So it's probably a good idea to be practicing this ahead of time with your class. Once they get to number four, or home plate, that's when they're going to use the flip chart. And this is homemade, I just laminated the numbers, put it on those little rings, and stuck it through some cardboard. So they'll get to number five and they flip it. You could flip it for them, they could just point to the number, but as they go, every time they do a lap, they flip. And this way they know how many laps are left. At the end of their laps, there's gonna be a stop sign. And that means they're all done. So that's a really nice indicator for the student, keeps them on track and they know when they're finished. Yep. So the third station that I love to do is a batting station. So I have baseball tees that I can use. Um, you can use extra large cones, um, anything that a ball will sit on. And I also have these cool skeletal balls. So I'm able to tie a rope, a string. These are like these, um, bungee type of cords that I wrap around the ball and I also wrap around the tee. So when you go to swing and hit the ball, the ball will roll, but it won't go far enough to where the student can't pick it back up. And that's important for some of our more low mobility kiddos. If you have a kiddo who loves to run, obviously throw a beach ball on there, let them hit it and go to town. I also put down spots on the floor for our students that are mobile and are standing. They can put their feet on the little poly spots so they know this is where my feet need to be. I'll use a pool noodle, I'll use a baseball bat, sometimes I'll just have the student using their arm. These are the three main stations that I do for baseball. Now sometimes what I'll do is called obstacle stations and I will place each one of these stations around the gym and in between each station I'm going to add something like a tunnel or a balance beam. So the student may do one lap around the bases, then they go onto the balance beam, then they hit the ball one time off of the tee, then they go through the tunnel, and then they're catching and throwing the ball two times with a friend or a paraprofessional. And then they're maybe going and stepping on some stepping stones. And then they're back onto that running to the bases. So keeping them moving throughout is really big when you have those kids who have high mobility and just want to run and play, but also you need to make sure that you are teaching them and that they're learning. If you have a kid with more lower mobility, have them stay at a station for a while. Use those different adaptations until they're comfortable and until they're able to be successful there. And switch things up as needed for those kiddos. That's all I have today for baseball adaptations and stations. I would love to do more videos for you, so please leave some more comments below. If you have some baseball adaptations, please leave them for me because I would love to learn new things and I'd love to share ideas. Uh, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you soon. Bye.